Welcome to making a Stuart model steam plant, this is part 73. Completing the gas connection with a few useful tips, then the first steam test. This is the support that I made for the gas pipe. I need to silver solder the threaded part onto the pipe. First though I mark the position with a felt tip pen. I did this because I want the mounting bracket for the gas pipe to be level with the end of the base that I made for the hand pump. When the unit is dismantled, thanks to the felt tip pen mark, I know where to put it before I silver solder it. But first, something very, very important. I'm going to remove the gas jet. This is a number 12 gas jet, and the hole in the end of it is very small and easily blocked. If you don't remove the gas jet when you're silver soldering near to it, the products of combustion inside the pipe can find their way into the very small hole in the end of the jet. By products of combustion, I mean oxidised copper and the residue from the silver solder flux. Cleaning up the outside of the pipe is quite straightforward, but it's not so easy to clean the inside. Once all the piping has been completed, it will be put in my acid bath. When I do this, I will remove the gas jet for a second time. You may wonder what I'm doing at the moment. I've cut a piece of silver solder, and it has a sharp end. As I move this piece of silver solder in and out of the pipe, this should loosen any scale on the inside of the pipe, and here I'm blowing it away with an airline. And now I don't think I'll have any initial problems with the gas jet blocking up. All I need to do now is drill a couple of holes in the bracket. In this clip I've marked the positions for the holes using a felt tip pen, and I didn't really measure the position, I just used my calibrated eye. To illustrate what I've just been saying, if you look at the end of the fitting, you can see what sort of a mess is made by the silver solder flux and the heat of the operation. This will be removed when the piping goes into the acid bath. The next part of the job involved holding the bracket in the correct position, marking through the holes in the bracket using my scriber point, and here I'm drilling tapping size holes for 6BA bolts. When working with wood, you often don't need to thread the holes unless the bolts are bigger. Just screwing in a small bolt will thread the hole perfectly. I'm using a brass bolt here and it's not a good idea because as you can see the end of the screwdriver is chewing up the brass. What I should have done is used a steel bolt that would have cut the thread then when I finally fit the brass bolts I won't need to apply quite so much pressure so that the slots in the heads of the bolts won't get chewed up. In case you're wondering why I didn't use steel bolts for this operation the answer is, had I have done that, you wouldn't have seen the damage to the brass bolt. Almost all of my videos are designed as tutorials for beginners. For the steam test, using a bit of Loctite 542, I'm going to screw the pipe adapter that I made in the last episode onto the end of the thread. Here it is, and with the help of the Loctite 542, it should seal perfectly. Time, I think, for the first steam test. The steam test was successful, but the gas canister wasn't full, so in no time at all it did start to chill, and there wasn't enough pressure to keep the boiler hot enough. In this clip, I'm lifting up the steam plant so I can see underneath the boiler on top of the burner, and the burner flame looks OK. In no time at all, the pressure started to rise in the boiler. Stuart 504 boilers really are quite good. With this very small amount of pressure in the boiler, I opened the central steam tap, then I opened a smaller steam tap, which admitted some of the steam to the Stuart 10 v I opened the valve at the bottom of the displacement lubricator, and first of all, water came out, followed by oil. At which point I closed the valve on the bottom of the lubricator, and also closed the valve on the top of the boiler. This is a safety precaution, because I'm going to remove the cap from the displacement lubricator. It's very important to isolate the displacement lubricators from the steam supply, before you remove the caps. If you're not sure what a displacement lubricator is, please watch some more of my videos. Suffice to say, it's a really simple device that forces oil into the cylinders. I removed the filler cap, filled the displacement lubricator with steam oil, and then I replaced the cap. Once I'd filled the Stuart 10 vs lubricator, it was time to fill the one on the S50. I opened the steam valve to eject the water from the valve at the bottom of the lubricator, then I closed it tightly and removed the lid. Suddenly the safety valve blew off at £60 per square inch. I'm finishing the filling of the lubricator on the S50 
You can now see the importance of closing the master steam valve. If the steam valve was open, this part of the job would not be fun. Before running the engines, I'm opening the oil regulator valves on both of the displacement lubricators just one turn. I open the master steam valve and then the steam valve to the double 10 V. When I finish this plant, the box bed of this engine will be sat on a gasket which will keep all of the water, hopefully, on the inside of the box bed to be drained into the sump. But at the moment, I haven't fitted the gasket, so there is a bit of leakage. I think it's a good idea to pump a little bit more water into the boiler before the main test. And that's it for the narration. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.